It's finally happened! We're finally here at long last, everyone! Senpai has confessed to Nagatoro! What? Honey! Wow! Are you oh, kidding really? me? You just ruin it oh, every oh. time! I'll see. What's in that book? Spoilers. 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 Soiled it! Soiled it! Soiled it! Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Big spoilers for the anime onlys, but we all knew it was coming to this point, eventually. And honestly, 144 chapters to get to Senpai's confession have all been worth it. And I can't think of anything more appropriate on Valentine's Day than to reflect on one of the best transformations from toxic to wholesome that I have ever had the pleasure of reading and watching. Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And I have this personal theory that hentai mangaka love to flex on their fellow mangaka by proving that they can write fantastic romances despite all the smut that they crank out on the regular. Take Nanashi, for instance, the creator of Nagatoro, who is rather infamous for some, um, very creative slash disturbing hentai. And no one would blame you if you were dubious of this guy claiming that he could write a gorgeous, wholesome story about two teens falling in love could even be done. And so, taking that into account, I do mean it when I say that this whole story, please don't tease me, Miss Nagatoro, feels like a flex. Because, I mean, if you just look at the very beginning of how this story opens up and all of that, if you were to say at the, at the very first chapter, yup, I shipped them, everyone would be dragging you out back to the MRI machine to have your brain checked out because it starts off so toxic and yet it makes a fantastic turn towards wholesome and becomes one of the most relatable and fun rom-coms you'll ever have the pleasure of enjoying. This demonstrates something that I've been talking about before in the past that in order to write a good romance you need concrete mile markers that clearly describe to the audience how the characters are growing and how their relationship is developing. That way, you can look back on the journey and make sense of what you've gone through. And those mile markers are also essential for guiding you as the writer to navigate the oddness and difficulties that come with writing any romantic arc. But especially for a story that tackles the Everest that is transforming a very negative relationship to a healthy one, you you need to make sense of that journey. My hope with this video is to illustrate how Nanashi pulled off the nigh impossible by taking a look back on the incredible journey that led us from chapter 1 to chapter 144 and the grand confession. Now, a quick forward and explanation before we begin. I chose each one of these mile markers according to how characters or events significantly help change either Senpai or Nagatoro and deepen their relationship. There's so many adventures that they go on and so many fun moments and teasing that I know that others will find important, but then we would be here for hours discussing every chapter. So that being said, as we go through the list, if there's any moment or event that you think that I missed or undersold, please let me know in the comments and let's get a conversation rolling. With that out of the way, let's tackle this mountain and see how Nanashi pulled off this romantic masterpiece. At the very beginning, we have our first chapter, the meat cute between senpai and nagatoro and now that we have come all the way to the confession and we've learned a whole lot more about nagatoro herself this opening makes a whole lot more sense and yet at the same time we need to understand something right here this is still toxic because when senpai first meets nagatoro she is absolutely tearing into him and teasing him for the comic that he has made driving him all the way to the point of tears and rather than really stepping back and being you know, like, I'm sorry for this, she leans into it and basically begins manhandling the guy. Sure, she's wiping away his tears, but I mean, anyone coming on into this room would think that this girl's having the time of her life by the look of her face from torturing this wimp. <laughs> so this obviously 
is a bad start to their relationship. A lot of misunderstandings, bad communication, teasing, and this poor softy just getting absolutely torn apart. Now then, we know from looking back at all the other chapters that Senpai has had kind of a little bit of a rough social life, so it makes sense that he would take even something that honestly in some respects isn't the worst that could happen to him and goes a mile with it. But still, this is unhealthy because both of these characters are really not yet in a place to actually be in any sort of romance, maybe even let alone in a good friendship at this point. This was a bad meeting between two complete opposites, and yet it's really the niceties of Japanese society and the fact that opposites do attract in many cases that brings these two back together for Senpai handing off the uh, the little napkin, the little handkerchief back to Nagatoro, and then just kicking off all these other interactions because now Nagatoro knows, oh, he's going to come back. He's going to come back for more. And this is going to be fun. And honestly, this underlies the, the toxic nature at the beginning of their relationship. So let's just be honest and call it as it is, even though we know now the backstories, that the fact that Nagatoro felt defeated by Orihara, that there was really no more spice or fun to her life, she was just kind of now coasting into high school, that that doesn't excuse really the way that she treats Senpai, and Senpai really needs to get a grip and take a hold of his life, find a backbone, find some confidence, and not just be a wet noodle. That was a bad combination for these two, and it was a bad place for either of them to be in their life. So, as a whole, this is just kind of bad. But, but, this is the beginning that Nanashi wanted to give us because he wanted to flex on everyone else by showing how he could take what would appear to be a bad setup for a romance, but a very good one for smut, uh, and take us into a very good direction, a very wholesome, healthy place. So, continuing on, after a whole lot of teasing, we get a couple of different moments where Senpai begins to realize that Nakatoro doesn't tease any of the other boys like she teases him. And what this tells us, the audience, is that Nakatoro finds Senpai more interesting. She finds Senpai more fun. And that is something that Senpai is going to have to learn throughout the course of this whole story, but this is a very important clue into understanding their relationship and into understanding Nagatoro. She isn't just someone who is mean and cruel to anyone that she comes across. She's not that kind of a girl. Uh, and this might bring into question then, really, Nagatoro, do you know how to express your feelings to other people? But she's learning, she's growing, this is just the beginning, but it is a very important clue that begins to let us know that there's a whole lot more to this relationship and a whole lot more to this particular character that we have yet to uncover. And that's why I feel like this is a very important mile marker because rather than just this simply being a story, and there's plenty of stories like this where the MC gets gets bullied and then falls in love with their bully and then falling in love just makes everything better that's really toxic and annoying that's not what this instance shows us this actually foreshadows that there's a whole lot more yet to be discovered that we are actually on a very different route as we begin climbing this mountain from there, the next big mile marker, I believe, is when Senpai has his fantasy dream of being in this isekai fantasy with Nagatoro. And I love that the anime really developed more of this, actually gave it far more life, because then it, it, really, it really blooms, in my opinion, into this fantastic garden of possibility. Imagine the spin-off that you could do with this. But in any case, this shows more through the anime, the nuance uh, that Senpai is feeling. Where there are good things to Nagatoro and her friends, and he recognizes that, but ultimately it always comes back to the teasing. No matter how nice they may seem at first, or how exciting it may seem at first, it just always comes back to that blasted teasing. And yet... He has this intense, very detailed dream because this is the start of his attraction to Nagatoro. There is something there that he does like about this Kohai who just comes and bashes and crashes her way into his life. And as a result of that attraction, as a result of that connection, even though he himself doesn't fully understand it, this leads him to getting very creative and sketching out Nagatoro in a cat costume, which is going to be very important for later on which is why this is a very important mile marker, in my opinion. 
The next big mile marker is paying people compliments. Remember, Senpai has no backbone. He is a wet noodle right here. And actually saying anything good or nice because he wants to, well, that's something that's basically kind of foreign to him. And there's actually a very interesting lesson to be learned right here. And this is something that I tried to teach my students when I was a teacher, that you only get respect when you give respect and you only receive kindness and love well throughout your life if you give it and paying a compliment is one of the easiest things that you can do to be kind and to be respectful to someone else if senpai really wants nagatoro's kindness and respect later on down the road he is going to have to give that now then now then, this might seem to conflict a little bit right here because obviously they are still in a pretty toxic relationship at this point. Why would you ever want to do something like that? Well, the invitation is being given for both of these characters to change by showing a little bit more respect and kindness towards each other. And as we know later on, Nagatora at this point has already kind of started falling for Senpai. And this is kind of her way of being all like, hey, buddy. I kind of like you. And if we are both willing to engage in more positive interactions, then this relationship can evolve positively. So it is both of them coming to meet each other in the middle, which is very important right here. But it requires Senpai to get out of his shell and pay real compliments, which is important because this helps Senpai to start expressing himself a little bit better, forging a more positive relationship with Nagatoro, and confronting some of his fears. This is an excellent step forward for Senpai and a good small step forward for Nagatoro, which is why I believe that this moment right here, while it might seem kind of small, is actually a very important mile marker. Then for one of the big mile markers, we have Nagatoro posing for Senpai in her swimsuits. And the reason why this is a pretty big one is as we learn later on down the road, Nagatoro feels a little bit self-conscious about her appearance. Yes, she is teasing Senpai. She absolutely wants to berate him for his virgin status, but it's kind of a little bit raw because she herself is a virgin and everything. This is just, again, a whole lot of teasing. However, this does open up the door for some of the big stuff later on down the road. This is most symbolic of both of them opening up to each other and willing to let the other one see them, either Senpai showing his own weaknesses or Nagato showing her own, exposing the more raw, vulnerable side to themselves that they have locked away. Senpai has locked away his vulnerability because of bullying and teasing, and Nagatoro has locked away her vulnerabilities because she has lost at the things that she cherished most. And so this is them actually taking a step forward in their own healing process. Is it, though, the healthiest thing to do? No, not really. This is actually both... This still a lot of teasing a lot of awkwardness i know that this caused a small firestorm on the internet when it dropped with the anime but it is an important step forward because it is again foreshadowing and heralding bigger things yet to come and that these two characters right here are really not they're no longer just simply being kinder to each other but now they're beginning to slowly open up and be more vulnerable which is very important in a healthy relationship another big mile marker in my opinion is the haircut moment and the reason why i say this is because even though nagatoro is teasing senpai at the beginning she genuinely wants to do something nice for him her friends come on in and tend to shave him bald and of course senpai finally finally really fights back showing that he is beginning to grow a backbone and we get to see a very protective side to nagatoro where she finally sets aside the teasing puts her friends in their place and then gives him a proper haircut showing that she does genuinely care for this guy this right here is a very big clue as to what the true nature of their relationship is and it shows a big step forward on both of their parts which is why i believe that this is again an important mile marker the next big mile marker has to be the beach trip the reason why i say this is because again senpai and nagatoro are both stepping way outside of their comfort zones and sure nagatoro doesn't mind showing off a bit more of her skin i mean she is as tan as she is because she is on the swim team so she's going to be showing off a lot of her body but in this case right here she is showing off her tan lines which is a bit of a no-no and even willing to show off what 
<laughs> what little bit of chest she has in comparison to her two friends who are walking around with badonkadonks. <laughs> So this is a big thing for Nagatoro right here. She is willing to go out there to try to catch Senpai's attention. And for Senpai, this is big because normally he just stays at home. He doesn't like being out in the heat, nor being out at the beach, nor being around with a bunch of very attractive women, and especially Nagatoro, out in public. And on top of that, of course, they're still teasing him and everything. It's rough for Senpai, and yet, and yet he is happy that he went on this trip in the first place. And this really cements a budding relationship, a budding friendship now between him and Nagatoro's friends. That They will, of course, tease him in the future, as we're going to see in the next couple of mile markers, but now, they're all like, ah, okay, we see why our friend right here, why Hayase likes this guy, so we're going to keep him around. We're not going to push him away like we might have done with the whole shape and a haircut to bits part instead we are going to now kind of shepherd over this this bashful sheep and see where this goes this is an important development right here because not only are Nagatoro and Senpai progressing in their relationship with each other being more open and vulnerable with each other and definitely getting out of their comfort zones which is very good but now they have acquired the proper wing women that they will need going forward in their relationship the next big mile marker has to be the Summer Festival. And I I remember, I remember being in that same awkward place as Senpai as a teenager where you're like, I have a crush on someone, or I like someone, or I want to see someone. I am going to go to that activity that there could be that person at. And I know that that makes horrible sense in English, but it is what it is. And so Senpai goes on out to the festival hoping to run into Nagatoro, but she is late because she is over with her club. And so he runs into the friends. And the two wing women, in their own teasing horrible way, decide to uh, up the ante and hasten the uh, the process of events by <laughs> taking him prisoner, chaining him up like a dog, and then sending a picture to Nagatoro saying, we have your boy, and Nagatoro comes comes tearing on in and they then spend a fun time all of them together at the festival playing all of the different games competing making a trade Nagatoro gets senpai sets him free and then they go to see the fireworks the relationship is deepened Nagatoro is once again the hero and senpai gets to spend time with Nagatoro and she's like you need to open up you need to actually let people know if you want to spend time with them if you want to spend time with them hint hint wink wink nod nod so for Nagatoro, you could also say, hey girl, maybe you could tell the guy that you actually like him like that, okay? Well, all of that aside, when they go to actually see the fireworks and they're teasing each other and you got a good natural ribbing, I love that when the fireworks finally start going up and they realize that they're surrounded by all of these people making out in the woods and very close to doing even more in the woods, <laughs> that they both retreat and just looking up at the fireworks together with their minds numb. And and this is a big moment again to the audience it's like yeah Nagatoro you're not as experienced as you tried to come across both characters have been humbled and the relationship has been deepened in many meaningful ways open communication has now been brought up between them which is going to open up the doors to far more positive conversations between them in the future but before we get to those positive interactions, we have a rather negative one that needs to be touched on, and that is the mile marker of the stalker. When Senpai is asked to pretend to be a boyfriend for a day in order to lure out the stalker, of course Nagatoro is not going to be happy at all that Sakura, who's a real player, is going to be spending time with her Senpai. And as we get to see in other moments throughout the entire story, Sakura has been with all kinds of boys. She is probably the the most experienced one at this point in the entire friend group. And there she is with poor little sheep virgin and senpai going off on a date and she's dressed all sexy like Nagatoro is fuming. And senpai has kind of taken on this role because he's like, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is kind of his jab back at Nagatoro being like, I can do whatever I want. And also he's like, oh, these girls are never going to give me any sort of peace unless I help them drag out their stalker. Though the reason why I believe that this is truly an important mile marker is because Sakura immediately begins pressing all the right buttons being a good wing woman like she is and being like, you know what? Don't you want to go on a date actually with someone else? Nagatoro, perhaps? And somebody's like, yeah, 
Yeah, and like it begins to get his mind working. All of these muddled thoughts and feelings that he's had across all of this teasing, whether or not there could really be anything there. This is an important step for him to start realizing I actually do have feelings for Nagatoro and maybe I should act on them. And then, of course, Nagatoro comes on and showing her far more jealous side by just hauling out this stalker and ending the farce as quickly as she can so that way she can have Senpai all back to herself which isn't necessarily the most healthy thing, but this definitely shows to us that Nagatoro is very serious about her relationship with Senpai. And this finally takes us to the climax of the very first season, which is the competition between Senpai and President of the Art Club. This, this duel of skill right here is very important because, well, this is a world that Nagatoro necess is not necessarily really a part of. Of. She's not part of the club, she's not really an artist, and the guy that she likes is set to lose everything that he holds dear because of her interactions with him. Because the club room is now seen as this unholy harem room where all sorts of bad things happen, the club must be shut down. So she's going to do everything that she can to help Senpai win his bet against the president. And this, of course, then requires that she and Senpai finally have a truly good, honest conversation between each other, that they plan things out. Senpai asks if he can draw her, and she is willing. She's finally willing to fully open up to all this vulnerability and let him draw her, which is going to expose her to the entire school. But not only that, her friends work with her to to take the cat costume idea that Senpai had earlier and really capitalize on it. So Nagatoro is everywhere this is really taking her out of her comfort zone both of them really are but they're working together to win and granted president flaunting her body would have won in a straight up vote but because of the morals committee she is forced to accept defeat because her painting is taken down so senpai wins he gets to maintain hold of the art club and of the room and nagatori continues to come and be a part of his life and they have won the respect of the president this is a huge huge mile marker forward and really where the story and really at honestly at any point could have easily have devolved into smut it back into bullying and where the MC just falls in love with their tormentor and when they get together everything is great and wonderful because that's just the uh, the ugly veneer of of a toxic relationship that's actually good when it really isn't. The story at any point up until this moment could have veered back into that, and that's what it would have been. But leading up to this point, finally, truly, the trail breaks off towards the wholesome, and Senpai Nagatoro take a very important step forward. And really from this point on, things just get better and better because Senpai Nagatoro have learned to be vulnerable, to be honest, to complement each other, to work together. And even though there's still plenty of teasing and misunderstandings going on right here, they truly have begun to understand each other and they actually care for one another. And so, now with the trail veering off towards the wholesome and healthy, what is the next big mile marker along the way? It has to be the zoo date. One of the reasons why I believe that this is a, such a huge mile marker is because Senpai begins to share with Nagatoro the things that really mean a whole lot to him. This is a very personal experience, a very good experience for both of them. As Nagatoro begins to learn more about Senpai, Senpai learns more about Nagatoro, they spend good quality time with each other, and Nagatoro stands up for Senpai when their classmates try to tear into him and into Nagatoro's artwork. Work. This is honestly a very good moment right here. After that, the next big mile marker, I believe, is when Senpai visits Nagatoro when she is sick. This is when Senpai again steps out of his comfort zone. If Go meets Big Sis, gets kind of taken a little bit for a whirlwind uh, together, and we get all, we get some good catching up. He's he gets to see Nagatoro in a completely different light. We get to see how she is kind of the effect of the youngest sibling, and anyone who knows the youngest sibling or is the youngest sibling, yeah, a little bit of a wild child. Normally, the middle child is the one who gets really crazy, but younger the youngest sibling can also go really hard go really crazy and we begin to understand a little bit more about Nagatoro. 
But ultimately, this meeting is a very positive one as Senpai finally learns Nagatoro's first name, even though he's going to later on ask for it, like, hey, give it to me so I'm not just simply getting it from your sister, because your sister is obviously teasing right there. But it is a very wholesome moment, and it's one where not where Senpai actually begins to show, again, real backbone. It's like, okay, then, if we are eventually going to get into a deeper relationship, I want it to be kind of on our terms, not because anyone else is shoving us that way. Let us explore what we have together and that's a pretty big thing this is of course followed up with senpai getting sick because he visited nagatora when she was sick so she then comes and visits him and we get really that cute wholesome moment where <laughs> senpai calls her by her name we have all the visions of what would it be like if they were actually together and that's when we really get to see that both of them do wish to be in a deeper more romantic relationship with each other it's just going to require again more honest conversation but there it's awkward and i think and i i think that if we were to step back and we'll be a little bit more analytical about this right here this smile marker also lets us know kind of where we have been because if this had been a healthier relationship from the beginning these two would have gotten together shortly after this because it's now all out there in the open even if they were even if their brains were addled a little bit by fever and by embarrassment we're so close to them getting together but because of all of Nagatoro's teasing and because of Senpai's wimpiness back in the day and how he's internalized so much, he has he feels like there's just this insurmountable wall between them. That even if he does have feelings, maybe even if she has feelings, there's just this wall between us and there's no way of breaking it down. And what this mile marker tells us is that while they are making progression, there is still an obstacle, consequences of their own choices which must be overcome if they even want to get into a fully romantic relationship. The next mile marker, while it might seem kind of small, is significant within Japanese culture that on Christmas, Senpai and Nagatoro exchange gifts. This is a very romantic gesture. This lets you know that we have gone from silliness and toxic relationships and bullying firmly into rom-com territory. Immediately following afterward is the mile marker of them going to the shrine. And this is just this is just kind of fun right here. With Senpai meeting Nagator and being like, oh, you're, you're a shrine maiden. Okay. And she joins up with him to, uh, to do the prayers, to do the ritual for the new year. Asking for good luck. What is it going to be like with romance and everything? And while there's a lot of superstition that you can buy on into, maybe even good luck, magic maybe, what is the will of the gods? Ultimately, whether be magic fate the will of the gods senpai has decided for himself that if he is going to get into a relationship he's going to do it because he wants to and it's going to be his actions this is a very big and important step forward how many protagonists have we seen in all different kinds of stories wherever there's a romantic plot where romance just falls into their laps and one character kind of makes it happen Throughout this entire story, Nakatoro has been the one who's really been pushing things. She has been the bully who's come on in, broken into his life, and has really been moving events along. Finally, at this point, Senpai is going to take the reins himself, very purposefully, not because anyone else is pushing him to do it, to explore his to explore the potential, the possibility of really being in a romantic relationship with Nagatoro. He is beginning to steal himself and change as an individual to become the guy that he needs to be in order for them to have a healthy relationship together the next mile marker which is going to set up a lot of the story all the way leading up to chapter 144 is the school judo tournament where Nagatora really is just going to kind of brush off and be like, yeah, whatever. And Senpai's like, yeah, whatever. I know I'm not really all that good. But after spending a lot of time with Nagatoro, realizing what a great athlete she is, and also kind of beginning to pick up on that there's been a defeat right there. She doesn't feel all that confident. He wants to support her, and he's going to try his best. And by him actually trying his best, by working out, by practicing with Nagatoro, and pushing her in kind, this is going to set up the bet between them. That if Nagatoro can beat Orihara in a match that Senpai is going to have to give her a kiss. 
Another mile marker, and this is one that might seem almost too small to put in there, and this is one of the reasons why I'm like, there's so many different moments throughout the throughout the manga and throughout the anime that we could point to and say that's a significant mile marker. But I say I might argue maybe that's a little bit too small. And this is one where you guys might say, ah, eh, that might be a little bit too small to really count as a big mile marker, Lars. But I'm going to say that it is when Senpai gets contact lenses. The reason why I say that this is an important mile marker is because this is Senpai for himself, by himself, taking a big step forward to change who he is. Getting rid of the glasses and trying to just kind of be a little bit more mature and a little bit more self-confident. Getting contact lenses is for him a big deal, yet he's unable to complete it on his own. It's kind of spooky poking your eye with your with, with your finger, putting in a contact lens. I mean, I'll be honest. I'll actually be honest. I wear glasses, and I wear glasses all the time because I don't like touching my eye. <laughs> I don't like the prospect of using contact lenses. So this is kind of spooky for Senpai. I can relate to that. And it takes Nagatoro helping him out to put in the contact lens. And after this physical appearance change right here, Senpai already starts coming across as more mature. Granted, he still has a long ways to go. There's a lot for him to learn. He's got a lot of mannerisms like nervously pushing up his glasses that takes him forever to get over. But this is for him a big step forward that he is choosing for himself to change himself to be more positive, to be more mature. To be more proactive and that's why even though it's a very small little bit i think it's actually very important after that we have the snow trip i love this right here because again this is senpai trying to get out of his comfort zone and to improve as a person and here we see nagatoro in her element being sporty being cool she is just with all the cool kids all the older kids and everything's going great for her for senpai he is just, he's just crashing time and time again, which leads to them having a beautiful romantic time together on the slope after he's proven that he's willing to actually try, which was something that he was not prone to do earlier before. And even his friends are like, yeah, dude, you can't do this. You can't do this. And finally, Senpai, just like with his physical appearance change, finally takes a real uh, finally takes a real step forward in character change by being proactive, by being brave, by accepting defeat when it comes, and asking for Nagatoro's help when he really needs it. This is a very big moment for him because he's finally, finally, really and truly changing as an individual, really stepping up and evolving. We then come to the judo tournament. We to the judo tournament proper, where, of course, Senpai doesn't make it very far. And Nagatoro is beaten by Orihara. But like I said earlier, this is all we've had all the setup to have this moment where she's like, okay, then, well, you you have been lighting a fire under me. You want me to change. And you know what? I can change and I can go back into judo. I can be a better judo player, a better judo combatant. But know this i was crushed by orihara and that kind of destroyed me a little bit right here and if you're asking me to face off against orihara again in the future i am going to need some incentive i'm going to want that kiss because at this point now they both realize that they like each other but again because of all of that teasing and everything and because of all of just the contrivances of what's expected in a teenage romance and especially with all of the weird tropes that you get out of your typical teenage rom-coms in japan there's all of these expectations and they're kind of playing a little bit into that which is why i like where we get to in chapter 144 and again this is all just kind of good setup for what is coming down the pike we then get the practice date at the aquarium this of course is a big thing right here because this is them actually going Going out on a date, even though at first it, this is passed off as a practice date, as Nagatoro says later on, no, this to her was a real date. And honestly, for Senpai, this was kind of a real date for him as well. This was a practice date in in as much as that was what they labeled it, but also because this is him trying to figure out, could I actually be Nakatora's boyfriend? I, I do want that. What what would, it, what would it be like? And like, dude, you've already been on a couple of dates with her, and you've already been at her house, you've taken care of her, you guys went to the zoo together, and this is something that I find, I'm just going to put this as a little bit of an aside right here, but honestly, I find this kind of funny, 
that when it comes to dating, when it comes to romance in real life, you always have that question, when are people actually a couple? And when is a date a date? Because sometimes, like it, this has happened for some of my friends, they didn't realize it, but they were effectively dating someone for like months and then only realized afterwards, like, oh, I've basically been in a relationship with this person this whole time. We just haven't been smooching. <laughs> And the other person's like, Wayne, like, come on, come on. I, I want the kissy kissy. <laughs> and so this whole practice date thing actually does make sense. It's not as ridiculous as you might think. And it all leads to them opening up, realizing, like, I actually do want to date you. But because of those stupid parameters that we placed on each other that I've got to beat so-and-so, I've got to do such and such before we can get together. It just isn't coming together. And of course, with their friends spying in on them, it takes a turn for the silly and the weird. After that, the next mile marker, which is a cultural step, uh, really for both of these uh, characters, is sharing bento. It's a big thing right there. You expect that your significant other is going to take the time to make a meal for you, and you're going to enjoy all of the love and effort that they put into that meal, making it just taste so much better. It's highly cliche, but this is, culturally speaking, a big mile marker for them in terms of their a uh, romantic progression. After that, the next mile marker, since uh, since Senpai's met Nagatoro's sister, it's now time for him to meet the big brother. While this doesn't necessarily advance their relationship really far, it goes to show that Senpai is finally feeling truly jealous of Nagatoro being around other guys because he fears that he might lose uh, her to one of them. And this also begins to widen a little bit more of the Nagatoro family and who is going to be really rooting for him. Having the big brother in his corner is very helpful for later on down the road. The next mile marker, <laughs> this is a big one right here, ass and breasts. <laughs> oh boy, this moment right here. So with Nagatoro now really training to go up against Orihara, she's going up against all these other girls who don't really like Nagatoro. And Senpai's already kind of stuck his foot in it, both in his mouth and into the situation, by standing up for Nagatoro against these girls that he doesn't know at all. The big one being, and I do mean big in various ways, Shiki, who is a new rival for Nagatoro, kind of the stepping stone leading up to Orihara because she herself is a great judo competitor and someone that Nagatoro really has to watch out for. Well, it... Because of their interactions up until this point, Shiki does have a certain amount of respect for Senpai. And after Senpai and Nagatoro make it get, uh, get it wrong, who now has which bathroom right here? Which, why would you change the bathrooms partway through the semester? This is a stupid move, school. <laughs> they end up in the wrong bathrooms. Nagatoro is now with all the guys, and Senpai is with the girls. And Shiki does, honestly, the noble thing and steps on in to protect him going into the shower in order to prevent the other girls from realizing that he is in there. However, these showers are already very small, and Shiki's a very well-endowed girl. Senpai is up against quite a bit of this right here. Now then, let's just kind of be honest with ourselves right here. Whether as adults or teenagers, and as someone who taught teenagers, I've got stories to tell. Stories I didn't want to hear from my students, and yet I heard them. Because my students thought that I was deaf and would talk about all kinds of things in front of me. And be like, dude, why? Why would you say this? So, after hearing a whole bunch of these things from teenagers as a teacher, <laughs> looking at this moment right here, honestly... This right here is a massive temptation because what kind of guy wouldn't, in this kind of a situation with a very beautiful, highly endowed girl, you're both naked in a shower, not take the opportunity to turn around or to even feel aroused. <laughs> this is a huge moment right here for Senpai who's showing extreme mental fortitude by not giving in to so many obvious temptations, even if she were to turn around and break his neck for trying it. There are those guys who would think it was worth it. And by him standing his ground and focusing on Nagatoro, he is showing his dedication to her, which really impresses Shiki and wins her over to their side. 
she not only becomes a rival to Nagatoro, but she becomes an ally, which is very important. And on top of that, we get to see what lengths Nagatoro is willing to go through in order to be with Senpai and to keep him away from other girls, even if it means risking injuring her already uh, sprained wrist. The next big mile marker is the field trip. And the reason why this is so big is because Nagatoro and Senpai have to work things out with each other about what they're going to do together. But it's not just about them anymore. It's about all their friends, all of their expectations. Where are they going to go on their field trip? What are they going to see? What are they going to do together? We have proper communication happening at long last. And, of course, the friends kind of helped to set things up for the two of them to spend some time together and go yet to another shrine, wearing Yukata. Oh! <laughs> and they have, of course, the challenge of a walk from one stone to the other in order to prove that your love is true. And again, at this point, it's very much out there in the open that the two of them actually like each other. But the reason why this is so big and so important is not just simply because you have the wing women trying to protect Nagatoro, you have Shiki's friends trying to destroy everything, and Shiki and Orihara have to come in and stop their friends from ruining this grandiose romantic moment between Senpai and Nagatoro, but... When Senpai feels like he's going to miss finding the rock and completely miss up the ritual and potentially thereby through the powers of the gods and a fate to destroy his chances with Nagatoro, we get this incredible, heartbreaking moment that is just so well done where he envisions what life could be like after he and she graduate. Where what if he doesn't get together with Nagatoro? What if he doesn't kiss her? What if he doesn't confess his feelings? Well, he goes on to school, and we get to see a grown-up senpai right here, and the guy is actually looking pretty good. But he feels lost in the wind. He he doesn't have a true good guiding star. Sure, he's practicing to be an artist, but what else is he doing with his life? And he thinks about how much fun it was to be with Nagatoro, and he has the chance to run into her. And they share some coffee, they catch up a little bit, but she has clearly moved on. And even though he wants to rekindle what relationship they once had, she moves on and she gets into a car, potentially with another guy. And it's at that moment when Senpai envisions what this future could be like that he realizes he does not want to go into the future. Whatever his future is, he does not want it to be without her. He wants to date Nagatoro. He wants to marry her. He wants to be with her forever. And so he, and so you then have that wonderful moment where then she calls out to him and guides him to the stone. The ritual is completed. It, fate is sealed for the two of them. But again, we're going to see some real maturity later on. Then, of course, another big mile marker is hand holding. Ah, that lewd in the opening, in the open hand holding, which is a big deal for these two. So I'm going to place this as a mile marker. But then the next big mile marker just kind of takes everything that's been going on with the judo tournaments with orihara with the kiss to the next level the bet what if the only way that they are going to confess to each other is if nagatoro can beat orihara and place first in the judo tournament and senpai can place first in the mock university entrance exams this right here is really big this they're doing this to show that they've both grown as individuals that they are both more than just their teasing relationship between each other and this is kind of to help build up that courage that motivation to do something that could be so dangerous so potentially embarrassing and awful what if it doesn't work out well i can prove that it will work out by doing something else and this happens all the time with young people and even with adults that they place restrictions qualifications requirements on what they're going to do next with their romantic life rather than taking the plunge this is sadly quite relatable right here so the bet has been made and yet what we're going to see later on is that not is that senpai begins thinking maybe that wasn't the best thing to do but before we get to that the next big mile marker and this is huge is that nagatoro is willing to pose nude for senpai president is like for senpai himself to finally say look i am willing to sketch people in the nude i am finally willing to 
be that vulnerable, to throw away my prudishness, and to seriously pursue what it means to be an artist because I want to win, because I want to confess to Nagatoro, I am willing to do this no matter how embarrassing it is. And President's like, if she's not going to do it for you, I will definitely model for you because that is going to be very helpful to you. But Nagatoro then steps on in and finally is completely vulnerable to him and poses nude and all of the things that could happen at this point if this were back in the early chapters doesn't we don't go into the realms of smut we go into respect and wholesomeness as both of them are being honest with themselves being honest with each other and supporting each other this was actually a very beautiful, very well handled moment in the manga, which is then followed up with the obligatory Hot Springs encounter, the next big mile marker. And the reason why this is so big is because he's already seen her naked. Being together in the Hot Springs together, I mean, they've basically already, they've all but confessed at this point. They know that they like each other. They've been holding hands. They've been sharing dreams for the future to, with each other. Nude modeling, this is almost as intimate as anyone can get other than now both of them being together naked in the Hot Springs. And remember, Senpai did not turn around to do any sort of shenanigans to Shiki while they were both naked together in the shower which means he only really is intending to do anything with Nagatoro and she with him here they are in the hot springs together working really hard they're basically in a relationship right here and she's teasing him let's just go all the way this could be a whole Vermayan gold situation right here where it's like I'm gonna jump your bone here in the hot springs and we're gonna get it on it's basically what is being set up right here and again for a hentai artist this just seems like that is where this story is about to go and yet senpai finally pieces everything together and is like no 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 if we're going to be in a relationship we're going to do it right we're not going to skip any sort of steps and even he himself is like all of these all of these things that we've placed on each other what does it actually mean are we getting together because of something that we've done or is it because we really wish to prove to ourselves and to each other that the other is actually worth it this is a big mature very powerful moment for senpai right here to say what well, nagatoro nope we are not doing it here in the hot springs not at all instead we are going to pursue our goals our goals are to be the best that we can be in our respective fields and to be together we want to be together we're going to do it right no just skipping to the steamy spits even though it's very clear we are in the steamiest place possible we could easily steam each other's rice and be absolutely satisfied and yet we would be skipping something that would be important to each other we should not back down we should not we should not jump ahead we're going to do this properly and while that might sound very prudish given the proper context right here this is actually a very big thing to say right here. To respect someone enough to say, no, not yet. Eventually, but not yet. Let's do it right. Let's make sure that we're both in the right place for this to, for this to work out. Let's make sure that we're both keeping our word, that we're doing that we said what we would, and being our best selves. Because the hot and heavy is only truly romantic if both people are absolutely willing and have brought all of what they are who they are and their experiences together to that intimate moment good note right there both in real life and when writing fiction after the hot springs encounter which is easily one of the biggest mile marker moments of the entire series we then have senpai helping nagatoro to discover her own fighting style this is really important right here because nagatoro could easily lose to orihara going into the tournament however because of senpai because of what he knows about her and knowing just how bombastic spunky and unpredictable she is he's like look your style your fighting style doesn't come down to one singular move it is who who you are that you need to embrace everything that makes you you Nagatoro your spunkiness your tenacity your bravery your ability to just change at the at the flip of a coin to to overcome any and all obstacles to get what you want you change 
in order to uh, tackle any obstacle as in front of you. You aren't as stubborn as I am, stuck in his ways. You are truly bombastic in all of the best ways. And that is a huge compliment that Senpai can now give to Nagatoro because of everything that they've been through. Back when they first asked it, back when she first asked him to pay her a compliment, he would never have been able to tell her that. But finally, after this whole journey together, he can not only pay her a great compliment, but help her to see the truth for how she can defeat Orihara and win the tournament. And then the next mile marker is this, a real date. And actually, compared to everything else that they've gone on, this doesn't seem big at all. And yet, it is a real date between these two, where they're acting like a couple and not just oh little flirty awkward teenagers they are actually acting like a far more mature couple than you would believe and that is fantastic progress that is a huge mile marker right there the next big mile marker is Nagatoro beating Orihara at the judo tournament, finally proving herself and truly earning Orihara's respect, and Nagatoro having now greater respect for herself, while at the same time, Senpai loses in the mock exam. He does phenomenal. He places second, but he loses. What will he do now? Rather than falling into depression and into doubt, he goes on to cheer Nagatoro and he is there for her, which sets up everything now for the confession because he owes her a kiss, but he then takes her, well, at first someplace where they someplace privately where they can talk. And he finally confesses everything to her. And it's like a dream. They just kind of like wander off, fly off together, completely now in love. Sure, they did not meet the parameters for everything they said that they would do, but at this point, Senpai has proven everything that he needs to prove to himself. He didn't need to win. He just needed to become a better person. He needed to improve himself for himself. He already loves Nagatoro. And because now he realizes that he is in the healthiest place that he can be, he is now ready to take that step forward and be in a relationship with her. And she is now in the healthiest place that she can be ready to be in a relationship with him. Who cares if he lost the mock exam? He can now confess because he is in the right place. Their relationship has gone from a horribly toxic beginning to just this amazingly inspirational, wholesome, healthy conclusion. We're not at the end of the story yet, but these characters have gone on an incredible arc together. And even though they didn't reach everything that they wished that they could, that does not mean now that they aren't ready. Because they are, because they've grown, they have changed, they've become better, they understand each other, they love each other. What else is there now to say other than, I love you? And to go on from that point, and now he's so caught up in it, he's willing to kiss her in the middle of the public, at the beach. <laughs> This is fantastic right here because this comes full circle back to the the practice date, which was actually a date. And what would he have done? Would he have kissed her or hugged her? Now he's going in for the kiss. And Nagatoro's like, no, no, no. We are surrounded by so many people. I'm a little bit too embarrassed right here. Let's actually be at the proper place where it can be just us right here. And that's beautiful. I love it. It goes to show that even though they've matured so much, that they're still just teenagers. But everything else just feels so wholesome, so mature. They have grown so much. And when you look back at this incredible journey that they've gone on thus far, they have climbed the Everest that is taking a horrible, toxic relationship and transforming it to this wholesome, beautiful thing. This is inspirational. This is incredible. So now that we look back and we can see this entire awesome journey for what it is, there is one last thing that I should discuss. And that is, should this story have actually been about a negative relationship becoming a positive one? The reason why I pose that question is that, well, I've had that question actually with some people. Thing is this, is that there are unfortunately a lot of very toxic, abusive, manipulative, awful relationships in real life, and a lot of people suffer in them. And if we 
put into our fiction these kinds of relationships and put them on some sort of pedestal as something that is normal, as something that is good, as something that can be good if you just just stick with it even longer, that eventually they will change, that it will get better, you are actually communicating the idea that these negative relationships, these awful relationships are okay because they might get better, they might get healthy. And that's a very dangerous message to communicate, especially to younger, more influential people who are more susceptible to getting to these bad relationships on for a large part because they just simply don't know any better. And if you really want to dive into that topic, I've already done a video on that, which I'm going to link so that way you can go and check it out because that is its own conversation right there. But so is this a kind of story that needs to be told? I'm going to argue yes. And the reason why is because here in this story, it's not Nagatoro changing Senpai. And it's not Senpai changing Nagatoro. Instead, both Senpai and Nagatoro change and become better better people because it is the right thing to do. Yes, they are motivated by love for one another. However, as the story progresses and as we learn more about them, they are changing also for themselves. They are taking their own steps to move forward in their life, to enjoy themselves, to be more fulfilled, to be healthier, more well-rounded individuals in all aspects of their life. And they are doing it because they want to be in a happy, healthy, romantic relationship with the other person. They are not simply changing for the other person, which is in of itself toxic. That is no good. There's no guarantee that a person will change for the better in the long run just for someone else. They must change for themselves. While Senpai and Nagatoro have inspired the other one to change, they changed for themselves, which is why the exam, why the mock exam, and why the judo tournament were so important, because those were the things that proved to themselves that they could grab life by the horns, that they could be the masters of their own life, that they could change for themselves, and there was benefit to that. That is why Senpai did not let Nagatoro jump his bone in the hot springs, was even though he wanted it, he absolutely did. He did not want to skip crucial steps in their relationship. He did not want to let himself down, and he did not want her to let herself down by taking the quick and easy way to satisfaction. Instead, it is to fight, it is to improve, it is for you to undertake those challenges to become a much better, much stronger individual, someone with principle, someone with morals, someone with skills, someone with goals. And then you can, through your compatibility with someone else, form a beautiful, wholesome, fulfilling romance. And that is the message of this story, that a toxic relationship can be saved. Toxic people can get better, but they must do it for themselves. They must go through the adventure and through the journey. And what made it possible was that both of them were willing to go on this journey. If neither of them were willing to do this, or if only one was willing to do it and the other one wasn't, this would easily have slid down the mountain slope into the usual hentai crap that you find all over the place, which is not wholesome and is just there to get your rocks off. No, instead, this showed that these kinds of relationships, they do happen. They're far more common than we would like to admit. And if you want something better, people must change for themselves. And then they must change together. They must explore a healthy relationship together. But if either one or if neither are willing to do that, you will always be stuck back in chapter one. And if you think that chapter one is romantic... You need to go to an MRI and have your brain checked, because that is not okay. And Nanashi admits as much, shows us as much, and through the process of 144 chapters takes us on this incredible adventure to show us what real romance is, what real character development is. And that is why, coming from a hentai mangaka, this story is one massive flex. So that is all I have to say on that topic right here. Whew, this video was a long one. Imagine if I had covered every single chapter right here. But hopefully now you can see 
what kind of effort actually does go into redeeming a toxic relationship if you want to do that within your own stories. And I will say this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm working on here as a novice author. I'm actually trying to do that with a story of my own. It is hard. It takes so much work, which I think is one of the reasons why people just kind of tend to take the easy way of doing the negative relationships, because that's just so easy to do. Better yet, maybe, would be to focus on more positive romances from the get-go. And they're very possible, but they themselves are also pretty difficult to write. Writing romance is hard. However, it can be done. And I think that you can draw great inspiration from successful stories like Please Don't Tease Me, Miss Nagatoro. This is an absolutely great story. I honestly do mean it when I say that I think that this is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece of great storytelling and it's something that should be lauded and applauded far far more and for everyone who has stuck around with please don't tease me miss nagatora from beginning to end i hope that you have enjoyed this adventure as much as i have because it's just so fantastically done and i cannot wait to see where the story goes next even if we're going to wrap up in the next few chapters i would be fine with this because this is such a beautiful story on its own but i hope that we get a whole lot more because i think that there's still so much more that we can explore with the relationship between senpai and nagatoro but we'll just have to wait. And while we're waiting for that, if you would like to support everything that we've done right here, if you'd like to support me for doing this massive video right here, which I would appreciate very much, then please like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already done so. But please, something that would help me out so much is if you check out the books that I myself have published. I've left links for them in the description below. But otherwise, thank you so much for sticking around for this incredible adventure of Please Don't Tease You, Miss Nagataro. Thank you for listening to me waffle about, about all of these important mile markers that have led us up to the Great Confession in Chapter 144. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.